I think everybody here knows me, but I'm Ned Callen, if you don't know me. And uh, this is a very special occasion for, for us. And I want to welcome all of you to the Department of Psychiatry for this wonderful event, which is to uh, really pay tribute and to honor uh, Norman Greenfield, who uh, was a longtime faculty member of this department, who I'll say a few more words about. But uh, the, all of you that are here have, have, in one way or another, contributed to this department um, or are related to Norm. We have family members, uh, Marge and daughters and grandchildren, which are, have come a long way to get here or have been very involved with him over the years in one form or another. Um, and uh, it uh, makes me feel really terrific inside, actually, to have all of you here uh, to, be, to come together to help us start off this lecture series, which is going to be an annual lecture series in his honor, um, uh, based on the donations that many of you, if not all of you, have contributed to to support this lectureship, which will be an ongoing event really to focus on uh, some of the things that were dear to Norm's heart and also have continued to be of value to us in the department and the uh, values that we cherish deeply. So, so welcome to all of you. And uh, what I'd like to do is just uh, give, say a few words about Norm and his contributions in the department um, and then to, uh, introduce our speaker uh, who is really going to be uh, fun for us to have. And, uh, we spent the afternoon together, and I think it would be sort of just perfect for this type of an event. So um, let me go back to sort of the beginning um, in the Department of Psychiatry and set the stage for you. This is not actually the beginning. This is in the early 1960s. And for those of you that may recognize, this is probably out in front of the old General Hospital, I think. Um, and um, this was, these were the early members of the department. Um, and here's Dr. Norman Greenfield next to Dr. Milton Miller, uh, who were really the two sort of people that founded and began and sort of started the initiatives in this department. And another member, Dr. William Fay, is right over here, who also was a fundamental contributor to this department. And it was really um, this early, these early individuals that set the stage for what I think today is a very, very unique department. And uh, obviously, I'm a little bit biased. But I'll tell you why I think it's unique and also tell you why and how Norm especially contributed to its development and continues to provide us with sort of a guiding light from the standpoint of our values. The department in the early years was not a department of psychiatry. In the 50s, it was a department of psychiatry and neurology, or neurology, I, I guess, not even psychiatry was part of it. And it was a splitting off in the early 50s where Mil Miller came and I think Bob Ressler was the chairman and Norm was recruited as the second or third faculty member to this department um, to help build a department of psychiatry, which at that time was a fairly novel idea. And uh, the idea that uh, a department would be devoted to mental illnesses uh, was, was critical. And the department itself uh, was really seen, I think, importantly, as a sort of a humanistic reservoir for the medical school. Uh, and so not only was it important from the standpoint of focusing on mental illnesses and beginning to separate from neurology, but also as a place to sort of keep the heart of the medical school alive from the standpoint of the humanistic side of medicine and the humanistic side of training. And that humanistic value is something that we very much cherish today and I believe actually is one of the things, the defining features of this department. Now this is an early picture of, of Norm. Shows him in his study. You can see this is before the days of uh, PDFs and things like that. Um, he actually very much cherished his books, and um, he, as I said, he joined the faculty very early on in 1954. He was one of the founding members. And he and Milt Miller sort of went, went about trying to put together a department of psychiatry that they thought would be cutting edge and modern at that time, and it turned out that it was quite that way, and also would carry things into the future. He uh, was very involved with psychoanalysis. He was trained as a psychoanalyst and really saw that as one of the most stimulating intellectual enterprises of his day. But uh, as I'll mention in a moment, it wasn't very long before he started to move away from that and to question some of that in a way. But in addition to his very active practice, uh, he was a tremendous clinician. He was very admired by the medical students and the residents as a mentor um, and, um, and also was, was very, very much involved with the teaching enterprise. In addition to that, he had a strong and driving interest in research. And that was another thread that was here very, very early on that he really pushed um, from the standpoint of wanting to make sure that we actually were measuring quantitative things 
and not just getting into uh, issues that didn't have some scientific basis. And at that time, again, I think that that, that was a thrust that was not across the board in, in all the fields. And he, he was uh, really pioneered a lot of things that some of you may know about and others of you may not have known about. But he was very involved with the idea of thinking about how physiological responses are important in relation to the mind and in the, in the body and the brain. And how all that came together in relation to why some people suffer with psychological and psychiatric problems and others don't. And also how these things can be used from the standpoint of thinking about how to get people better. And just to give you an example of this, here's a book that he edited, um, co-edited, called Psychoanalysis and, Bi and, and Current Biological Thought. And when you go through these chapters, the same questions that we're asking today, he was asking and this group was asking back in the late 50s, early 60s. Another uh, volume uh, that uh, he was very proud of uh, was the first edition of this handbook of psychophysiology, which he edited which really brought together for the very first time researchers uh, from the standpoint of trying to think about how we can use what at that time was modern science, which was basically me measuring sweat responses and heart rate, to understand more about what happens in people's brains and in their bodies when they're suffering from depression and anxiety and schizophrenia and things like that. So he was really very, very visionary and he had many numerous publications including a publication in Nature, uh, which is uh, a, still a quite an impressive journal, as well as a variety of, of other uh, places where he published his work. So this is a, a little bit more of a modern picture, um, and uh, this is uh, one that I like a lot, and you can still see that he, the, the books haven't changed, they've just gotten colored. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, when I sat down and really tried to think about, you know, what, what is, was Norm's legacy and what were his contributions, uh, it's very difficult to put into words um, uh, the essence of a person or what they've given to, to an institution or to a place. He definitely was the heart and the soul of this department very, from very early on and his values uh, were very important and continue on today uh, in, in many, many ways. Uh, specifically from the standpoint of his scientific curiosity uh, and thinking that science was really pivotal from the standpoint of our understanding of the field also from the standpoint of absolute commitment to patients and getting patients better, uh, and also from the standpoint of the training programs, which all of which we v value very much today. But when you distill it down, I really came up with some of these ideas. And one is, and this is actually a statement that he would use, um, but I really think that he was one of these guys that used sort of tough-minded, scientific, rigorous thinking to really sort of courageously approach tender-minded topics, emotion, for example.